On the road to becoming a Home Assistant Pro, you'll need to start to learn about APIs. By the end of this video, you'll be able to look at an API documentation or a YouTube tutorial and use information from the API to create a sensor in Home Assistant. Now, let's roll the intro. What is an API? In a nutshell, an API is simply a messenger. Imagine you're at a restaurant and you have a waiter and you have the kitchen. The API is the waiter basically taking your order and then delivers the food. The API documentation is going to be able to tell us which type of messages can we send. So basically what's on the menu and what type of response or what can we expect back from the API. And it will also tell us about errors. The command line interface really is a simple way to send instructions to a computer exactly as what you do normally on day to day when you're using a mouse and a keyboard. Let's jump into the SwitchBot API and let's see how that works. To actually talk to the API, so to make your order, this is the host. This address over here, API SwitchBot, is what we will be using to communicate. There are different ways that we can communicate. We can communicate in four ways with a get, a put, a post and a delete. To keep your account safe and secure, you're going to need to be authorized. To do this, in this example, we're using a token. To actually get the token, if you're doing a SwitchBot integration, you can follow these steps with quite simple. You can get it through the app. Tap on the app version 10 times. Don't worry if you lose a token, just regenerate it and you'll be good. So once you've got your token, put it maybe on the notepad like I've got over here. Token, and this is how the token should look. It's not going to be exactly the same because each user is going to have their own token. Now we're going to need to do our first request. But first we need to find out of how are we going to make this request? So how are we going to build the command that we're going to use in the command line? So let's jump back into the documentation. Let's find out. Note there's a request limit per account of 10,000 calls a day. Look at the parameter and you can see the exact name authorization and you can see the location of the authorization, which is the header. Under devices, you're going to see a get. So get v.1.0 slash devices. What does this mean? This means that we are going to ask the messenger, so we're going to ask our API for a list of all of the devices. So I am just reading information. I am not controlling the devices at this stage. Underneath here, there's more information about which devices can actually appear. Obviously, this will depend on the devices that you have in your own home connected to the SwitchBot API. First thing is using curl. Now we need to specify the header, so minus H authorization we can open up with the double quotes and go back to the documentation and you can see the past possible parameters in the request and we have the authorization over here and we know it's a string and it goes in the header hence we've put the minus h over here so we put authorization then we put a colon so we specify in the value and the value of the authorization will be your token so get your token and put it in so far, we've specified the authorization, but we have not specified the API itself. So in the documentation, you should see the host domain. Copy this, and this will be exactly the same for everyone. So this is going to be the server in the cloud that SwitchBot have to manage all these requests. Now we need a specific path based on that request. Because we get in the device list, let's just get this v.1 slash devices. So copy this in. And let's add that at the end. So complete command will be curl minus H authorization. And this is the actual, what is the authorization? So you can see this is wrapped up in the double quotes. And after that, you've got the API with the devices at the end. So let's get all of this. And now depending on what operating system you're using, either Windows or Mac, you should have a terminal. So this is what I'm using. Don't be scared by this, this is quite straightforward. What we're going to do is we're just going to be pasting in our command, which is the curl command, and we're just going to press enter. If we've been successful, we should have a message returned. Now this looks all gibberish, so let me show you a better way of actually understanding this. So from devices, you should see an empty line. Copy this curly bracket and go right down until the curly bracket closes and we can copy that out. Now you can simply Google a JSON format validator. That's what I normally use. And I will just put the uh, information inside and click process. 
You should see a valid green over here and this is going to beautifully format the message. So I'm going to take the message out over here by using this button of a copy and I'm going to go back to my notepad and I'm going to paste it in. If you're not familiar with JSON messages, don't worry, we're going to explore it right now. So scrolling down in the documentation, we got to the response. So we sent a message to the messenger and we've got a message back, which is the response. We've copied and formatted the response we've put it in here. This response here has a few keys. These keys are status code, message, and body. If you look at this carefully, you'll see that status code, body, and message are all higher level information. In fact, if you have a text editor like my one, you can actually collapse the message down. So this is the basic format of the message. The message has a status code, a body, and a message itself. And these curly brackets define the style and the end of the message. If you're wondering what is in body, the following information you'll find it down below. So if I expand body and I look at the first thing and you can see there's the famous two spaces, it's a recurring theme if you've been watching my other videos. And we have device list. A device list provides a list of devices because I have more than one device. In fact, I can collapse on the device list and I can see I have the device list and the infrared remote list. So we have two different lists. In the device list, we have device IDs. You can see over here, the device name and the device type and the hub device ID. If you're getting value out of this video, remember to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for many more home assistant and smart home gadgets tutorials. I actually went back and you can see the switch bot humidifier and I paired it with the app and I've rerun the command and I should have the new device ID. So you can see the humidifier appeared and now I have four devices linked, which reflects what's in the app, which is fantastic. If you actually want to know what this actually means, the enable cloud service in this example is Boolean. So Boolean is a true or false value. And it determines if the cloud service is enabled or not. So if I were to disable the cloud service, this would be false. You can see there's a lot of values here in the device list that don't appear in my own response. If you pay closely attention to documentation, it actually tells you that some of these, for example, are only available for curtain devices. So if one day I get one of those curtain devices and I add it in, I'll actually be able to see that in the device list response. Now this table down below is telling us what could be in the infrared remote list. I don't have any devices to show you, hence I've got an empty array. And at the end, it shows us the status code and the message. So we have the status code 100, that actually means success. So these two are actually link together. Now if we look scrolling down and we look at the device status, we can actually pick a specific device ID and we can actually find out the status of that device. In our scratchpad notes, we have the device ID and the token. So the token hasn't changed unless you've reset it. And in the device ID, we can basically use any device that we've got over here. So I can pick the humidifier, the room meter, the hub, or the bot. So let me pick the meter to give you an example. I'll pick this up. I've got the device ID over here, okay? So let's start building up this again. We know we're going to need this at the end. So I'm just gonna copy and paste it in. And I'm gonna replace the device ID with my own device ID. So remember to remove the curly brackets. So you should have something like this. Now, if you still have from the previous part, the main curl, we can copy and paste it. We have this HTTP part, so we can get rid of the part at the end and ensure that we only have one slash. So we have this over here complete. So I'm going to get this whole long string, paste it in and enter. And we have a response back. So I'm gonna format that nicely for you. Cool, so we've got the status code 100. Remember that success, we have message, message success. So it's pretty much the same. And over here in the body, we have more information. We have the device ID, the device type, and the hub device ID. We also have the humidity value and the temperature value. Now with this information over here, you can create template sensors in Home Assistant to extract the temperature and the humidity. My fellow YouTuber BT Bird Tinkerer actually made a complete guide on his channel 
for the SwitchBot devices. He also shared the code in a GitHub pull request, which I'm gonna link in the description down below. Now, these instructions are pretty clear for me that I'm a home assistant pro. So if you're struggling a little bit, I'm gonna try and take some parts out of that code and try to explain it to you. So this is the part of the code that I wanted to go into some detail because this is linked to the tutorial and what we were doing previously. So you can see that in Home Assistant, we can use the command line interface and we can create our own switch bot humidifier to control the switch bot. And we can use things like command on and command off to turn it on and turn it off. But how do we actually do that and how does that actually link up with the API worker we were doing previously. If you look at the command on and the command off, and if we just take this and put that in our scratch pad. First bit over here is we're telling Home Assistant to go to the user folder, bin folder, and look for the curl library. That's gonna allow us to those commands that we were doing previously with the command line. Minus X gives us basically the whole command string. The post is what we're going to be doing. So if you remember from the documentation, we can do posts and posts basically means we're taking an action. We're not just reading, we want to actually, we want the device to actually do something. So we give it an actual command. And the post uses this application slash JSON, JSON as the content type. And you can see that reflected over here, content type application slash JSON. So the JSON is the way that we're going to be communicating with. The authorization is our API key. So that will be this long key that we've got over here. Minus D is the command that we're going to be telling the device to take, which is turn on. So if you scroll right down, you should be able to see command set for physical devices. So depending on what device you have, there'll be different commands. But bot, for example, has turn off and turn on humidifier has turn off and turn on. So the actual command is turn off and you can notice the off is a capital O. So you're going to need to follow the same caps. So we've got turn on in this example. And over here at the end, we have the same API switch bot, but the device ID would be the device that you have only here. And instead of using the slash status, we're gonna be using slash commands. And you can see it right here, the example, is device, device ID slash commands, and this is a post. If you've got any questions, drop a comment in the description down below. I hope this helped you a lot. If you want to learn more about Home Assistant, I've got 12 more Home Assistant Pro videos right here. This is Joe from Smart Makers. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.